Thank you for watching Retro Tech Toys. Today we're going to have a look at the Commodore SX64, otherwise known as the Executive 64. I'm really excited about this because I've been planning this for about six or eight months and we are not actually looking at the original SX64 that was released by Commodore in the early 80s. No, we're going to look at a build that we can do ourselves of a mini version of a Commodore SX64. Uh, this is inspired by the C64 Mini, and the company behind that, I don't believe they're planning an SX64 Mini, and that's why we're going to do it ourselves. It's going to be a lot of fun. So the great thing about this is we can build it out of parts that are readily available online, and we can do whatever we want with it. If we want to add some other flares to it or whatever we want to do, we can do that. So that's what we're going to do today. I've been planning this for a really long time, and I'm finally ready to do it. So let's get started. Okay, we're back. Here is what we're starting with. This is just a generic electronics component shell, and you can get these on Alibaba, AliExpress. Uh, there's a place I got it from called Banggood. Uh, you can get it from Amazon as well. Uh, it's actually the perfect shape for our project. And uh, I've got two feet on there already. I had to glue those on there and I'll explain why later. Went out and routed a small hole here and you'll also see why I did that in just a little bit. So we've got everything that we need going here. We have a ribbon cable that I made myself. This is just from, you know, random breadboard cable that I took and made a ribbon cable out of. And that's for hooking our display up. And our main component here is the Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B. And that is the perfect, perfect Raspberry Pi to use for this model. And uh, we're not going to do anything like install RetroArch or whatever. We're not doing that. You could do that if you wanted to, but that's not the route we're taking. We'll get into that later. So we need to get everything taken care of here. Um, there's no SD card in there yet, but I'll show you what we're doing in just a minute. We're ready to go here. I just need to get everything plugged in and I'll show you what I'm using. This is what I'm going to be using for the audio. This is just a random extension cable. Uh, nothing fancy. Got this from Amazon. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. I might end up having to plug it into the, the monitor itself. I'm going to try it this way first to see if this works. So we have that plugged in and we're going to route that out of the way. And what I need to do next is hook up the HDMI cable. So for that, I'm using this flat ribbon cable style HDMI cable. Uh, these are not very easy to get a hold of. They are on Amazon, but they're a little expensive. I think I paid about $15 for this one. And uh, as I said, all the stuff will be in the description below. But this is really important uh, that we have this super flat HDMI cable. If there's any bulge up here from like cable shielding or any of that, it's just not going to work right. So. Let's go ahead and get this plugged in. And I need to apologize in advance. I have spray paint all over my hands from another project. So sorry about the dirty hands today. Okay, let's go ahead and get this plugged in. All right, so that's plugged in and we're gonna set this out of the way for now as well. What I need to do now is prep for the SD card. This is what we're using. This is an SD card expansion cable. Pretty much it extends your SD card slot out to wherever you need it to go to. They have different links. Like I said, it's just a cable that has an SD card slot on the front, and then you slide it into your SD card slot and you're good to go. I'm not gonna hook this up yet. I'll show you what we're doing with this. Uh, actually requires this part here. This is kind of where like your disk drive uh, compartment would be like, so you could set um, your disks in there and all that good stuff. And uh, this is where your disk would slide in. And uh, if you check out Perry Fractic's channel, Retro Recipes, he actually made one that has an NFC reader underneath. And he could actually put little discs in that he made himself. I'm not doing that. I do have an NFC reader handy, but I wanted to do some other things and it was going to be hard to get all this crammed in here. So I'm doing something else. Well, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and slide this through here. And when we're done, this is actually going to be our SD card slot. We're going to have it right up front so that we can get things in and out as needed. What I'm actually going to do is put a little super glue on there. Let me go ahead and just kind of put a couple of dots under here and let's get this positioned exactly how we want it because that's going to be there forever so i'm going to set this aside and let this dry for now here's what we're using we have this uh i believe this is a yeah this is a three and a half inch uh, kumon display it has a touch screen i don't know if we'll be using that at all 
It also has an audio out. It's got HDMI. It's got micro USB for power, which we're not going to need. And this is what we're using. This goes into the GPIO port of the Pi. And this will power it and all that good stuff. And the HDMI cable will provide the signal. That will provide the power. Setting that aside, we're going to go ahead and uh, look at this here. Because I have to actually glue this into place. And it looks like this is set a little bit, so that's cool. Uh, what I need to do is make sure that this is set just right. And the way I'm doing it is you could actually still insert a disc if you wanted to. I'm actually going to glue this in again with super glue. And you don't need a whole lot. I'm going to hold this in place for just a minute so it can set for a second. And as you can see, the hole for the LED is right there still. I don't have one yet, but I can add one whenever I want. And I will do that. But we're going to set this aside. And I preserve the slot if you wanted to later on put an NFC reader in there to read. And we've got the SD card glued in, so that looks pretty nice. Okay, with that set to the side drying, I don't know that I'll need anything else for the super glue. What I am going to use are these command damage free hanging strips. It's just double sided tape. And we're going to use that to get the monitor on correctly. And we're going to cut it down to whatever size we need it. And we have to look for where our borders are here. And we'll just set some command strips right in there. And that'll work nicely, I think. I don't want to glue that in place because if this ever breaks or if something happens to it, we need to be able to replace it. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and plug right down here. We have the SD card slot and I'm going to plug our SD card in. We're going to take this. Uh, this came with grooves here and we're going to slide this right down into the grooves. That's where that goes. And as you can see, our little mini SX is starting to come together nicely. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in. And this is why we had that hole here on the bottom is because you need a place for this whole part of this uh, HDMI cable to sit somewhere. And it's out of the way, you'll never even notice it. And it just kind of sits in there like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some command strip and get that taped in. We don't need very big pieces. Small is fine. We've got our command strips ready. I've got them cut down. We're just going to apply them to the screen and that's going to stick in place right over here. And the reason why I'm not applying them to the actual assembly here is because I want to make sure that I get them just right on here. That's really important. Wow, look at that. The screen is on and it's holding pretty solid. All right, it's in there pretty nicely now. So this thing's starting to take shape. It's nice and secure. Um, what we'll do now is we've got everything plugged in back here just to give you kind of a good view of the back. And uh, we'll finish plugging everything in. We're gonna tuck all this stuff out of the way. All right, we got that plugged in. So let's test it out. We're gonna just see if it comes on. I actually have on the bottom case here, I've got a power brick hooked up to this. So this is going to give this a wireless sub capabilities. So that's one thing I've noticed is that other people's projects that are similar to this don't have wireless capability, but this one does. All right, let's see if it turns on. It does. Look at that. So everything works. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this for now. You'll see what is up with that later. I'm going to set that to the side and we're good to go with the bottom assembly of the SX64. Everything's hooked up. Here's the handle. So we're going to get this whole thing screwed in. And this is the part that's a little bit tricky because all this stuff that we just did, we have to make sure it works. And we have to make sure it locks down. Like I said, this is the part that's just a little bit tricky. We don't want to break anything. So I ran into a fun issue. Uh, and the issue is that I don't quite have enough clearance for this uh, power brick here to fit in right here because of this. But we're going to solve that the old fashioned way. I've got a rotary tool here and I'm going to cut some of this off. So let's try this again.
All we're concerned about right now is getting the proper clearance and this whole thing fitting. And there we go. Look at that. And uh, we do have a bit of a problem there. That wasn't the cleanest cut I've ever done. But I'm going to print something that will make this look so much better. And you'll see that soon. We have to get our back plate on. Let's go ahead and do that. That just kind of fits right in the back. There's another slot back there. Everything just fits like it's supposed to. So all the ports are correct. And I'll show you why I have these cutouts in a little bit. What I need to do now is go ahead and get our audio jack in. So what we want to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to glue that in place. And we'll have an audio jack. I'm just going to put some glue right around here. And just let it drip. And that's really all we need to do. All right, so we've got it set in there a little bit. It's not totally dry yet, but it'll do for now. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you why I have this. So let's pull out another command strip. Let's kind of trim whatever excess off we can. That's our power button. It's on there. It's not going anywhere. I'm leaving this open in case there's anything else I ever want to plug into here again. What we do is we're plugging into our power brick. And you'd probably do well to get a much smaller power brick, but this is what I had. And I'll explain what this is in just a little bit here. That goes along with the whole thing. All right, and here it is. It's all done. And I'll take you over all the specs and all the details. This took a lot of time to put together, and it took months and months to plan. And I'm really excited with how it turned out. While it's a little bit different than some of the other versions of this that I have seen on YouTube and online in general, I really like the way it turned out. I haven't seen anybody that's had a wireless battery powered rechargeable version of this before. And that was one of the things about the SX64 that appealed to me in miniaturizing it was making it completely portable. I wanted it to where I did not have to plug it in. And if that meant sacrificing a couple of things here and there, I was okay with it because for me, it was about portability. So just imagine not having to plug this in and after the pandemic is over, taking this thing to Starbucks and sitting there and opening it up and turning it on and just typing on the little keyboard that you see sitting there and you're not plugged into anything and people are looking at it like, what is that? So that's what I was really, really excited about. And now here's the moment that everyone's been waiting for. Let's turn it on. And I don't know if you can see it, but it does have a low charge warning up there, the little lightning bolt that flashes. That's just when it's plugged in wirelessly. It actually works perfectly, so there's no problems. Uh, it does do that when you plug it in, because you can also plug it in. You can use it while it's charging. Uh, you don't have any of those issues. And I know you guys are probably curious about what this is, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. We'll work with that standard C64 controller. I think most USB controllers are fine. You can actually go into the operating system here, which is Combion 64. And you can modify the controllers, the key mappings, and all that stuff. All right, I'm going to take the keyboard so you can see a game in action. And just so you see, I'm using the uh, joystick here. And I don't know if it picks up, but there is sound, and it's pretty loud. I don't know if it picks up on the microphone, but yeah, there's Ultima. And there's the SX64 Commodore basic screen. And this will work just like a Commodore 64. You can type and program in basic, and you can load things to a virtual disk drive 
or a virtual tape drive and then load them just like you would normally. Or you can hit F12 on your keyboard and there's a whole menu there for you. So you've got the best of both worlds and I can show you here that it works just like a Commodore 64. And there's everyone's favorite little program. That is the Commodore SX64 Mini. And now let's show you all the specs because it's really cool. And you're probably wondering how I get sound out of this. I do not have an internal speaker. And uh, I actually did that on purpose. Out of the way here, I actually have a portable speaker that I think goes with it really well, to be honest. I used to use a portable speaker. That's a $5 speaker. And it doesn't have a volume button on it, but it's really loud. But you can go into the menu settings on the Combian 64 OS and turn the sound up and down as you please. So I thought that really worked. I wanted to do it this way so I could use headphones when I'm not wanting to bother anyone or so I can use an external speaker. I just thought that would be really cool instead of having the speakers inside. Plus, with making it wireless, it just got harder to start cramming all these things into the 64. So it's going to be a little hard to get into if I ever have to get into it again because of those little mesh pieces there. They're actually glued on, but I used hot glue, so if I need to take it off, I can. And uh, switching it around, we used a Raspberry Pi 3B, so that's everything you need to see there. There's the jack we made for the headphones or the speaker. There's your on-off button. It's permanently mounted. And then we have four USB ports, and we've got an Ethernet port. And uh, right here, if you ever need to charge it, you just pull out that cord and you can charge it. It's a regular USB charger. And you may have been wondering what that thing was on the bottom. Let me show you. That is actually a thing I came up with. Um, I cut a hole in here because I wanted to put a display. And the hole I cut was a little too big, so I came up with this thing where I mounted a fisheye lens that you would put on a smartphone. I glued it in place up here so that you can you can honestly take the lens off and put other lenses on if you want but the whole point of it is is that it shows you what your charge is at so from zero to a hundred so you know when you need to charge again and it gets about two two and a half hours per charge with the i believe it's a 5000 milliamp hour battery that i put in here so you have plenty of charge up here i mounted instead of having a storage space for little discs because we won't be using any discs this is where the sd card goes so i'll show you how easy that is let me turn the unit off you can pop the card out and pop it right back in. You don't have to go behind the unit and you don't have to go inside of it. It's right there, it's glued down. And I did leave the slot open here in case you wanted to print out a little mini disc and put a disc in there just for show, but you don't need it. And that's it, this is the Commodore SX64 Mini. Took me a while to plan, took me a while to build. I'd also like to thank Perry Fractic from Retro Recipes for sharing this project because I was planning it right around when his episode came out, but I didn't know what direction I wanted to take with it or really how to execute it. And uh, his episode just really shed a lot of light on how to get this done. So mine's a bit different from his and it's a bit different from the actual creator of this project, uh, which Perry Fractic shared on his channel and I'll actually share links to as well but I really like how it turned out and the cool part about it is uh, you can do this however you want you can modify yours and make it different uh, you can add whatever you want take away whatever you want and you know you've got a unique Commodore 64 Raspberry Pi project that's quite a bit different from the usual just 3d printing some boring case and running RetroArch or something on it so a lot lot nicer than that and I'm really excited with how this turned out I've got a lot more builds coming soon. Be sure to check me out on Twitter. If you like the content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can see when new content comes out. I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff. I've got a lot more projects in the works. And uh, thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Toys. I will see you next time.